almost lost to history, there exists a hidden text known as the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. This ancient manuscript contains secret teachings that reveal the path to escaping the material world forever. However, not only were these teachings deemed too controversial by the early church, but the hidden gospel also contains the shocking revelation that Mary was supposed to replace Jesus as teacher and leader, as she was the only one who truly understood his secret teachings. And so the Gospel of Mary was banned from the canon of scripture and destroyed by the church. Is the material world an illusion? What hidden realm lies behind it? And what came before the Big Bang? We're going to answer all those questions and more right now. The discovery of the mysterious Gospel of Mary Magdalene began in the late 19th century, when a German scholar stumbled upon a collection of ancient manuscripts during an excavation in the Egyptian city of Oxyrhynchus. Little did he know that among these manuscripts contained the fragment of a hidden secret that would shake the foundations of Christianity. Over the years, more and more fragments of the Gospel of Mary were discovered in various locations and like pieces of a puzzle. These fragments were carefully analyzed and pieced together to reveal its hidden knowledge. This is information that you need to know. Get ready to unlock the secrets of the Gospel of Mary Magdalene and discover what it reveals about how to escape the material world. But first, make sure you like and subscribe because I'll be releasing more hidden knowledge on my channel that you won't find anywhere else. And if you ever feel like that you've learned something from my work, support on Patreon to get access to secret videos every week. I was raised in a Christian family, and I was taught that we only have one life to live and that we need to have faith in Jesus to be saved or suffer in hell for eternity. Now, the church uses this fear tactic to maintain power and control. I know it all too well. And when I first read the Gospel of Mary, it became clear to me why the church would hate it since its teachings threatens its systems of control. Now, unlike the Christianity presented by the modern church, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene hints at reincarnation and reveals the shocking truth that the material world is an illusion and that it can be transcended and that it has nothing to do with faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, in the Gospel of Mary, Jesus reveals that there is no such thing as sin. The Gospel of Mary says, Peter said to him, since you have explained everything to us, tell us this also. What is the sin of the world? The Savior said, there is no sin. You can imagine that the church wouldn't be too happy about that. A gospel that denies sin and has a woman replace Jesus? No way they're going to accept that. Growing up Christian, I saw firsthand how women were treated like second class, and I remember how strange it was hearing some of my family members talk about how they needed to submit and obey their husbands. And we see this clearly in the Bible, specifically in the New Testament, where it says that women aren't allowed to teach. I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. It also says that they must be quiet and that they are lesser than men and must submit to their husbands in everything. They're blamed for committing the first sin by eating from the tree of knowledge, but it says that they can save themselves through childbirth. Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner, but women will be saved through childbearing. The church even began to call Mary Magdalene a prostitute. Now that false claim that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute, it started in the sixth century when Pope Gregory the Great, who's not that great, linked her to an unnamed woman who anointed Jesus' feet in the Gospel of Luke. After that, Christian art and literature often portrayed Mary Magdalene as a reformed sinner and her reputation as a prostitute became deeply ingrained in popular culture. Now, just to be clear, I support S workers. I don't see it as wrong at all, but it would certainly have a negative impact on her character and reputation in Orthodox Christianity. However, in contrast to that, some people believe that Mary Magdalene was actually Jesus Christ's secret wife. But the biggest piece of evidence proponents of this theory cite is the passage from the Gospel of Philip that says, Christ loved Mary more than all the disciples and used to kiss her often on the, and dramatically the rest of the sentence is missing. Now, many scholars agree that the missing word is the mouth. 
And of course, the Gospel of Mary is often used to back up this theory as well, where Mary Magdalene is described as being closer to Jesus than any of the other disciples and as having received secret teachings from him. Before Mary takes the position of teacher and reveals the secrets of the hidden realm that exists beyond matter, the text opens with Jesus revealing the truth about the nature of the material world. As we'll see, one of the keys required to transcending the material world is realizing what the material world is. Have you ever asked yourself, what is matter? Now that might seem like it has an obvious answer, it's what's right in front of you, but really think about it. Most people imagine that matter is little hard bits whizzing around that clump together to form molecules and complex structures and the world around us, and that's what scientists originally believed. However, that view of matter is actually over a hundred years old and 100% false. Now, ever since breaking away from Christianity, my life has been about discovering the truth, and I quickly learned that you need to be just as critical of materialist science as mainstream religion. Now, thanks to the incredible discoveries of quantum mechanics, scientists today have been forced to admit that they have no idea what matter actually is. The fundamental nature of reality doesn't behave like particles of matter, but like energy, frequencies, waveforms that can communicate with each other instantly across the universe. Now, those of you who watch my channel know that this is one of my favorite quotes. One of the founders of quantum mechanics, Max Planck, said, as a man who is devoted his whole life to the most clear-headed science, to the study of matter, I can tell you as a result of my research about atoms this much. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particles of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. Mind is the matrix of all matter. So what the hell is matter anyway? Understanding the answer is critical to transcending it. In fact, the very first line that we have of the Gospel of Mary is Jesus being asked about matter. And Jesus reveals that all matter, all creatures, all things are interconnected, come from the same source, and will ultimately return to that source. The Gospel of Mary Magdalene says, Will matter then be destroyed or not? The Savior said, all nature, all formations, all creatures exist in and with one another, and they will be resolved again into their own roots. For the nature of matter is resolved into the roots of its own nature alone. Now notice how this agrees with the discoveries of quantum mechanics that shows that all things are intimately connected. Also note that everything comes from the same root, and returning to that root sounds a lot like the Big Bang, where all matter came forth from a singular and the theory of the Big Crunch that says at the end of time all matter will return to a singularity. But we still have the big question, what is matter exactly? And what if I told you the answer to that question also reveals what came before the Big Bang? Let me explain. We already know that the founder of quantum mechanics, Max Planck, said that matter doesn't exist and that mind is the matrix of all matter. Max Planck insisted that reality could not be material but must be mental. Max Planck said, I regard consciousness as fundamental. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. Everything that we talk about, everything that we regard as existing, postulates consciousness. Another pioneer of quantum mechanics, Erwin Schrodinger, famous for the Schrodinger equation, said that consciousness is fundamental, not matter. He said, consciousness cannot be accounted for in physical terms, for consciousness is absolutely fundamental. It cannot be accounted for in terms of anything else. Could it be that the Gospel of Mary held the secret of matter for what was nearly thousands of years before the discoveries of quantum mechanics? And if so, could its secret to escaping the material world be true? See, many scholars believe that the Gospel of Mary Magdalene fits in with the teachings of many other band books known as the Gnostic texts. These banned Gnostic texts include the Secret Book of John, the Gospel of Judas, the Apocalypse of Adam, and many more. And I've done videos on all these on my channel, by the way. What if I told you that this banned Gnostic wisdom agreed with the discoveries of quantum mechanics? According to these hidden teachings banned by the church, reality is not material at all, but it's actually mind, just like Planck and Schrodinger said. The Gnostic Christians taught that 
reality itself is the divine mind of pure light called the One, and that all things are emanations from this mind of pure light. They taught that we are divine beings of light, pieces of that One mind that have become trapped in a cycle of reincarnation in the realm of matter by an evil being they called Yaldabaoth and his demons, who they associated with the God of the Bible. See, the Gnostic Christians saw the God of what would become Orthodox Christianity as an evil demonic power that trapped souls of light in matter, and they viewed Jesus as a messenger of the true light to help humanity come to knowledge of their divine origins so they could escape. So according to the banned knowledge of the Gnostic Christians, before the material world existed, there was only pure mind pure light. If we realize that reality is not matter, but is actually mind which is light, everything makes sense. This agrees with the discoveries of quantum mechanics and also answers the question of what came before the Big Bang, a question that scientists can't even answer. What existed before matter, before the material world, before the Big Bang? was pure mind or pure light. The physicist David Bohm said that every aspect of the universe, from the tiniest particle to the vast expanse of space itself, was formed from light. He said, light can carry information about the entire universe. Light, by interactions of different rays, produce particles and all the diverse structures of matter. Matter is condensed or frozen light. When we come to light, we are coming to the fundamental activity in which existence has its ground. In other words, matter is nothing but light whose rays have been slowed. Frozen light. According to Bohm, matter is transformed light, similar to how ice is transformed water. So what is matter? It's actually transformed mind, transformed light, like a collective dream, a world of frozen light. And this agrees with the discoveries of quantum mechanics and the theories of David Bohm. The question is, if this ancient knowledge was correct over a millennia before modern physics, could it also be right about how to transcend the material world and escape the cycle of reincarnation? And what about the evil god Yaldabaoth keeping us trapped here? That's crazy, right? Well, let me explain because the answer is incredible and has everything to do with the secret teachings that Jesus told Mary. In the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, after Jesus reveals to the disciples the interconnectedness of matter, he leaves them. And the disciples are left lost and weeping, having no idea what to do without their leader. But in their darkest hour, Mary steps forward and takes on the role of teacher and leader. Then Mary stood up, greeted them all, and said to her brethren, Do not weep and do not grieve, nor be irresolute. Mary then delivers a message that shakes the very foundations of their beliefs when Peter asks her to reveal her secret knowledge. Peter said to Mary, Sister, we know that the Savior loved you more than the rest of women. Tell us the words of the Savior, which you remember, which you know, but we do not, nor have we heard them. Mary answered and said, what is hidden from you, I will proclaim to you. Her hidden teachings challenged the very essence of their understanding of the world and pushed the boundaries of what they thought was possible. She reveals secret knowledge that Jesus had entrusted only to her, that the true nature of reality lies not in matter, but in the power of the mind. The Gospel of Mary says, For where the mind is, there is the treasure. He does not see through the soul nor through the spirit, but the mind that is between the two that is what sees the vision. Mary then describes the soul's journey through the afterlife. As the soul passes into the spiritual realm, it encounters a host of demons and dark forces that seek to trap it in the lower planes of existence. Now, could that actually be true? It's important to note that most of these stories aren't meant to be taken literally, but as metaphors and allegories. Carl Jung, the famous Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, was deeply interested in Gnosticism. He believed that the stories were symbolic expressions and representations of the structure of the unconscious mind. In other words, these demons represent the lower nature of humanity, the base desires and impulses that keep us bound to the material world. So these demons and dark powers aren't literal beings, but represent aspects of ourselves that we must overcome in order to transcend. What is one of the greatest demons to overcome? Ignorance. And of course, how does one overcome ignorance? 
through knowledge. The Gospel of Mary says, It came to the third power, which is called ignorance. The power questioned the soul, where are you going? In wickedness you are bound. Mary describes the soul as defeating this power by replying, I was bound, though I have not bound. I have recognized that the all is being dissolved, both the earthly things and the heavenly. So what does that mean? It means that the soul has understood that the material world is an illusion, a temporary, transient expression of the all, the eternal, what we truly are. This overcoming of ignorance through knowledge Knowledge represents attaining a higher level of consciousness that frees oneself from the illusions of the material world and achieving spiritual liberation. Now, in the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, after it describes the soul defeating all the powers, the Gospel continues with one of the most beautiful Gnostic passages. They ask the soul, Whence do you come, slayer of men? Or where are you going, conqueror of space? The soul answered and said, what binds me has been slain, and what turns me about has been overcome, and my desire has been ended, and ignorance has died. In an eon I was released from a world, and in a type from a type, and from the fetter of oblivion, which is transient. From this time on will I attain to the rest of the time, of the season, of the eon, in silence. Slayer of men and conqueror of space describes the soul having broken free from the illusion of matter and the material body through overcoming ignorance and attaining self-knowledge. Now what about Yaldabao, the demiurge, the so-called creator of the material realm that keeps souls trapped in the cycle of reincarnation? Now even though this being isn't mentioned directly in the Gospel of Mary, it's the central antagonist, the big bad in Gnosticism. Is it true that we're really being trapped by an evil cosmic entity? Well remember that these are all metaphors for structures of the psyche of your own mind. So this evil being isn't a literal entity. According to a Jungian interpretation, this evil being that keeps you trapped in the material world represents the ego. Identifying with the ego, believing that it's the real you, can keep you bound to the material realm. Yaldabaoth says, I am the only god in existence, when that's not true, he's a false god. And the ego says, I am the true me, when that's not true, you are much more than the ego. But see, there's a dangerous misinterpretation that's going around these days in spiritual communities about the ego, and this needs to be cleared up. Now, there's nothing wrong with the ego. The ego is not actually bad or evil. The ego is what allows you to have self-awareness. If we didn't have an ego, our consciousness would be like animals. But you don't want to identify with the ego. That's the difference. The ego is a powerful tool, and you should use it but it's not what you are. Just like a fork is an important tool for eating, you don't want to get rid of it, but you don't want to identify with it either. It's not you. The ego is an important tool, but it's not what you are. You're something so much more, an eternal being of energy. So according to the Jungian interpretation, Yaldabaoth represents the ego, or it can also represent the shadow self, the dark recesses of your unconscious mind that must be explored. Mary Magdalene reveals that the material world is an illusion and that it can be conquered through self-knowledge and overcoming of one's lower nature. That is, it's not faith that saves you, but your own mind. But we have a problem. See, Mary reveals these secrets to the disciples, but some of them don't believe her. Why? because she's a woman. The Gospel of Mary says, When Mary had said this, she fell silent. But Andrew answered and said to the brethren, Say what you wish to say about what she has said. I at least did not believe that the Savior said this, for certainly these teachings are strange ideas. Peter answered and spoke concerning these same things. He questioned them about the Savior. Did he really speak privately with a woman and not openly to us? Are we to turn about and all listen to her? Did he prefer her to us? Then Mary wept and said to Peter, My brother Peter, what do you think? Do you think that I've made this up myself in my heart? Or that I'm lying about the Savior? Levi answered and said to Peter, Peter, you have always been hot-tempered. Now I see you contending against the woman like the adversaries. But if the Savior made her worthy, who are you indeed to reject her? Surely the Savior knows her very well. So what's going on here? 
Now remember that a large portion of the Gospel of Mary is not meant to be taken as being literally true. The author likely knew that women were being treated poorly by the church and wrote this to emphasize the importance of women, that they should be allowed to teach and they understood truths about reality that the men of the church were missing. But the Gnostic Christians believed that women held the key to understanding the divine. They saw women as powerful heroes. Eating from the tree of knowledge was celebrated, and women often represented conceptual thought or intuition, granting humanity the wisdom to conquer the illusions of this world. Some Gnostics even viewed Jesus himself as a messenger of a divine feminine being named Sophia, who represented wisdom. But the patriarchal forces of the church suppressed these beliefs, likely fearing the rise of empowered women. So was Mary really married to Jesus? Personally, I don't think so. I think these stories are metaphors, and I believe saying that Christ kissed her on the mouth and that she was his companion means that she was equal to Jesus, that she understood his teachings. In other words, that women can have authority as leaders and teachers just as much as Christ. Personally, I think that that's a much more empowering interpretation, and it fits with the authority Mary is given in her gospel. Ultimately, look, it doesn't matter if these people actually existed or if these events happened. What matters is understanding the truth about yourself and reality. And that's exactly what the Gospel of Mary is about, after all. If Christ or Mary were around today, they'd say, don't get caught up in the details. Who cares if I or we actually existed? Look within. Know thyself. That's what matters. The Gospel of Mary Magdalene represents everything the church hates, revealing that sin doesn't exist, a powerful female leader empowering the people, and that one can save oneself through self-knowledge. See, the church relies on fear and control to maintain its power, and the idea of individuals transcending their lower nature and connecting directly with the divine was seen as a dangerous idea that could undermine their authority. But despite the church's attempt at suppression, there's been a renewed interest in the Gospel of Mary and its teachings. As people today are now seeking to reconnect with their spiritual nature and transcend the limitations of the material world and also are realizing the damage that religion does, the Gospel of Mary offers a powerful message of self-transcendence and inner knowledge. The point is not to look to some savior or God in the sky. You don't need to bow or ask for forgiveness. Become your own savior. Now this has all been my interpretation of the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. What do you think? Check out my playlist where I examine the Gospel of Mary in detail and my other videos for more band knowledge.